الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهده ونستغفره واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده والنبي ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ما بعد. Today, brothers and sisters, والحمد لله, Allah has blessed us. Allah has blessed us, والحمد لله, to be able to live into the days of شهر رمضان. This month, alhamdulillah, there are many, alhamdulillah, who wished, maybe who thought, others they were planning what they would do in Ramadan. And Allah has blessed you and I, alhamdulillah, to live to this month. Where, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has informed us that this is the month in which Allah sent down the Qur'an as a guidance and a mercy. A mercy, alhamdulillah, and a guidance not just for those who say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadan Rasulullah, but it is a guidance, alhamdulillah, as Allah describes in Surah Al-Baqarah. Alif Lam Meem Thalika Al-Kitabu Laraiba Fihi Huda Lil-Mutakeen It is a guidance, walhamdulillah for those people, walhamdulillah who have taqwa who are trying to gain a connection with Allah This is the book Thalika Al-Kitabu Laraiba Fihi There's no doubt in it and this is the month, alhamdulillah, where we will celebrate the Qur'an. Many of us, alhamdulillah, for us this is the pinnacle of our year that we will spend the days and the nights with the Qur'an. I like to think, alhamdulillah, of the Qur'an, the risala from Allah, like a love letter. You know, when you love somebody, back in the old days, we used to get letter by mail. And that letter would be written in the hand of your loved one. And alhamdulillah, when you miss them, you will open that letter and you read it over and over again. And maybe, alhamdulillah, maybe, you read that love letter again and again and when you open it, you find and you learn something that you didn't know before. There was a small message that maybe we weren't mature enough to understand. This month, Shahar Ramadan, is a month, alhamdulillah, where we will rehearse the Quran every night. And alhamdulillah, I love Sheikh Muhammad al-Hanuti, he used to say to us, every time I stand in Ramadan, I learn something new from the Quran that I didn't know before. And I spent my whole life studying the Quran. And always the Quran is bringing something new. I know there are some people who say, brother, we're just standing and reading and some of us, we don't really understand what, what Allah is saying. Walhamdulillah, this is a book, walhamdulillah, at whatever level of understanding that you have, you'll benefit. The Quran is the only book I know of. Kitab Allah, only book I know of, 
even if you recite it or you listen to it and you don't know what it's saying, it is still ibadah to Allah. Somebody said, Imam, how can a person say something they don't know what they're saying, but the words still have power? I said, okay, I can prove it to you. I can tell you some words in Spanish that if you go to the corner where the Spanish men are standing in front of 7-Eleven and you say these words and you don't know what they mean, if they're not the right words, wallahi, you'll get a reaction. You say, well, I don't know what I was saying. That's not going to stop them from abusing you. Because maybe from your mouth you said some words, they had power. Maybe you don't know what the power is, but there's power. Walhamdulillah, the Quran is a book, walhamdulillah, that when it's recited, subhanallah, it has power. So every night, walhamdulillah, when we gather and we're reciting the Quran from the beginning until the end, subhanallah, there is a benefit for you. Maybe some of you, it will inspire you like it inspires me to get closer to the Quran. Anyone who says, Imam, I'm already close to the Quran, you're already lost. If you say, oh, I don't need that, you're out of your mind. This is the month, walhamdulillah. It is the pinnacle of our learning as an ummah. The whole world, subhanAllah, I know we're in false church and we're surrounded by people who are going about their daily lives as if nothing is happening. While we know, alhamdulillah, that around the world, over a billion Muslims are all connected day and night. Day by fasting and night by standing and praying. Alhamdulillah, there's a special connection that we have. And I know there are some people they are going to say, yes, Imam, but the rest of the year, Many of these people, they are away from the masjid. Then I say, thank God we have Ramadan, that for one month we can come and be connected to the masjid. Maybe, walhamdulillah, this will be an opportunity for our transition. Our transition, walhamdulillah, to be mindful of Allah, to have taqwa. Many people say, well, you know, Allah is saying that this is a book that is for the mutakun. Somebody said, well, how, how, how could we get taqwa? How can we get it? SubhanAllah, Allah tells us in the same Surah Baqarah. Ya ayyuhaladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum asiyam kama kutiba alladheena min kablikum la'alakum through your fasting, through your prayers, through your commitment to Allah, your mindfulness. In the fasting, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will provide you with a sense of that taqwa. So you want to know how do you get it? Fast. Alhamdulillah, and Allah has prescribed it for us as Allah has prescribed it for people before. I want, Alhamdulillah, I wish, I bet you. Tell your neighbor. You know Allah is so wonderful, subhanAllah. Allah could have said in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalaneena amanu, Qutiba alaykum as siyam that's it. Allah ordered you, you believe fast. Allah adds, the people before you were given fasting. That should be a message for you. That should be a message for you, alhamdulillah, like when the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the early days of the message of the Prophet Alaihi Wasallam in Makkah. They would 
just a few people who were waiting in anticipation daily for Jibreel alayhi salam to come and give Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam the next installment of the Quran. They were waiting. They wanted the news. What's the news from Allah? What's Allah going to tell us about today? And alhamdulillah, Allah didn't bring down the Quran like he gave the, the message to Musa alayhi salam. Allah brought the Quran down and then dispensed it over 23 years and Allah's Messenger وسلم, on occasions would share those parts of the Quran that would resonate with those people. We know of some of the, the asbab of, of the revelation, the occasion, what was happening when it was revealed so that for the companions they contextualize the Quran not as history but as news the news for them alhamdulillah what's the latest news from Allah and I think about Surah Al-Duha where the companions have been living and waiting for the Quran Next edition. And the Quran stopped coming. There are many in Mecca, they would have said, you see, this was a fluke. Islam is a fluke. Islam is a one-off. That whatever this episode of Muhammad ibn Abdullah is over finished you know there's some people who think like like that today you know they think islam is finished and then there was a period some of the scholars of the quran they say maybe 40 days no quran which for them would be like not having oxygen they're they're concerned and then allah reveals Allah informs him that Alhamdulillah everything that I have for you Muhammad this coming is better than whatever you had behind you Wallahi I know for some of us we see we feel so dejected Dues. If you had that missing feeling of the Quran, you get back in touch with it. Allah will remind you what's ahead of you is better. In this life, and alhamdulillah, for the people of taqwa and in the hereafter. But my reminder to you, alhamdulillah, that while we are having this feeling, Allah reminds us at the end of Surah Al-Duha Why Allah, why did Allah add that fasting was given to the people before you? So you can tell them So that you can tell them Alhamdulillah in this month if you thought you were cut off from the message of Allah 2,000 years ago, we have news for you. That alhamdulillah, the Quran of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam revealed over 23 years in Arabia is still alhamdulillah guiding and teaching people. And I'm here to invite you, my friend, my neighbor, that you follow Musa alayhi salam. He was a Muslim. And he used to fast. And you now, you say you're a Jew, but you don't know how Musa fast. You say, Alhamdulillah, you say, oh, well, I'm, I'm a Christian. I don't need to fast Ramadan. You say, what? Didn't you have something from Isa ibn Maryam? How to fast? 
They say, yes, Jesus, he fasts 40 days, 40 nights. They say, okay, well, how did Jesus fast? They say, well, I don't know. How did Musa fast? Well, I, I don't know. They say, okay, well, alhamdulillah. Since we, alhamdulillah, we believe in Musa and we believe in Isa, then alhamdulillah, we know how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam observed fasting. So why don't you leave what is doubtful and join us in what's sure? It's a global gathering to remember Allah. I'm going to say to you today, alhamdulillah, a man came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and he said, Ya Rasulullah, Matasa'a. When is the hour? When is the hour? We're in the month of Ramadan, alhamdulillah, we're fasting, we're trying to prepare ourselves to be connected with Allah. There are many people, they wish that they could have lived into this month, they would have been sharing, alhamdulillah, their, their food and their drink, alhamdulillah, with the needy people around them, they would have. This man, he said, yeah, Rasulullah, I want to know when is the hour. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi answered this question different ways at different times. Maybe the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he could have narrated the hadith of Jibreel Alayhi Salam that there was a man that he came from the desert surrounding Medina and his clothes were exceedingly white and his hair was exceedingly dark and there was no sign of travel on him and none of us knew him that man he asked the Prophet Sallallahu many questions but when he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tell me about the hour the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said the one who is asking and the one who is asked come forward brothers I'm looking at you <laughs> come forward I remember my son he was, when he was little if he wasn't doing what he was supposed to do and you call him he would cover his face thinking that if he covers his eyes that you won't be able to see him well, I, I see you. Please, brothers on this side, please come forward, Bidlillah. Especially uh, for you, because people, they can enter the area that the other brothers made available, Bidlillah. The Prophet, alayhi salam, said the one who asked and the one who was asking, neither one of them have any knowledge of it. Brothers and sisters, the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi salam, answered this man, this day by saying to him answering the question with a question and the question is in this month of Ramadan as we are planning and hoping and preparing what have you prepared for it it doesn't matter, alhamdulillah, how long you live, how many days you, you fast, how much sadaqah you gave in the past. What matters, alhamdulillah, is are you preparing for the time when the Malik al Mawd will come to you? So you say, Alhamdulillah, I'm prepared. Muhammad al Hanuti, he would remind you if he were here today. Prepare yourself with your salah. Prepare yourself with your salah. This connection, Alhamdulillah, will be the best service for you 
And the Ramadan is a great month to step up your game. Bidnillah, that Allah might find our deeds acceptable. Forgive us of our sins and enter us into his paradise now abroad. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam wa rasulihi kareem wa ala alihi wa sahabi jmaeen. Bye bye. For us today, Alhamdulillah, Shahar Ramadan. They have an expression in Latin, carpe diem. Seize the time. I, I have to confess that many of you, I see you now, you are very happy. Alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us, we're all here together, we look so beautiful. Alhamdulillah, we have bad breath and we love to smell the bad breath of the other person. It's okay, Alhamdulillah. We feel tired a little bit, maybe. It's okay. We're enjoying this experience. But I want to fast forward for you. Many of us, when we reach the second day of Shawal, we will have regret. Yeah, you have regret. Day of Eid, alhamdulillah, you're happy. Allahu Akbar. The day after Eid, you start having regret. And it's not, the, it's not like the regret the companions of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they used to spend six months before Ramadan in anticipation. And they used to spend the next six months in reminiscing. But for many of us, it is not anticipation or reminiscence. It's regret. Oh Allah, you gave me this great hidayah and I wasted my time. Oh Allah, I should have spent more nights in Salah, but now Ramadan is over. Oh Allah, I should have spent in Ramadan and now I miss my chance. Oh Allah, oh Allah, oh Allah, ya Rabb. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, live in this life as if you were a traveler. His companion Ali radiallahu and he said, therefore you should plan as if you're going to live forever and pray as if you're going to die tomorrow. I would invite you, alhamdulillah, to leverage the month of Ramadan for your own personal growth. Those of us, alhamdulillah, who have deficiencies. We have things about us, that we need to change. By the way, you start talking about telling people they need to change, that people start coughing, scratching. Interesting. Not talking about you in particular, just in general as a sense of anxiety. This is the month, alhamdulillah, for your transformation. If you are off track, the Quran is guiding you in the month of Ramadan. Every night you're gonna hear a, a, a durus, every night, lecture, every night, Quran, every night, tafsir, every night. Just come to the masjid. But then you need to be strategic. Take a look at yourself. I believe this is a, if Hanuti was here, he would tell me this hadith is weak. <laughs> Shaitan is chained up in the month of Ramadan. But I'm saying to you, this is a month where you can start working on yourself. I can work on myself. I know I have issues, you have issues. If you don't have any issues, ask your wife. If you don't think there's anything wrong with you, sister, ask your husband. 
If parents, if you think you have everything going right, ask your children. And if you want to get a sincere answer from them, ask them, do I have areas where I could uh, benefit from growth? Don't tell them, don't tell me what's wrong with me. You might, get, you might get your feelings hurt. Are there areas that we have for growth? There are people who have addictions, smoking. Some people have addictions, lying. Other people are addicted to other types of, of behaviors. Many people I know, alhamdulillah, they pray in the morning, they go to work and they work all day and then they come home at night and they make salah. It looks like this. One and four. If you say, mashallah, Allah, through the example of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he made salah like this, but let me make some improvement. I have a tendency, maybe I pray duhr just before asr, and then I think I'm going to pray asr, and then it winds up being just before maghrib. And I'm always chasing my tail. Bismillah, the month of Ramadan, this is an opportunity for you and I to make change. Psychologists say it takes 23 days to create a habit. Make a list of your objectives in Ramadan. How you could get the most benefit from Ramadan, make a list. Plan as if you're going to live forever. Say, SubhanAllah, it's Ramadan. I want to get the best out of Ramadan. I'm going to commit myself. A, I'm going to make salah on time. B, I'm going to pray in the masjid more. C, I'm going to study the tafsir of the Quran, which we will read tonight. I, uh, e, I'm going to uh, visit the cemetery. I'm going to go visit the sick. I'm going to visit my relative. I'm going to co correct uh, bad relationships with my brother. I'm going to apologize. I owe somebody money and I never paid him. I'm going to uh, make restitution. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, and make a list. So that as the days of Ramadan close, you don't leave the month of Ramadan with remorse, but you leave it with reward. Alhamdulillah, well, I know that for many of us, planning is not our strong suit. I invite you to write it down. And I'll tell you something about Ramadan I find amazing. There are many people, they try to benefit from the financials. So whenever there's a special in the supermarket, they get the coupon. And they know the coupon is only good from this day to that day. And they cut the coupon because they want the, the risk from the coupon. And then, alhamdulillah, they plan what they're going to eat based on what they have from the coupon. And then when the day comes for the coupon, they only go to the store, which they get the double coupon. Well, I, I know. Allah has given us the gift of Ramadan. There's a special. Alhamdulillah, every sunnah is worth a fard. Every sunnah worth a fard. So maybe in our life, maybe we missed some, some fard or maybe we were making salah, our mind was way away. Alhamdulillah, in the month of Ramadan, increase your sunnah. You know that Salah Jamaat is 25 or 27 times the reward? Then come, alhamdulillah, and increase your prayer in Jamaat. And if you do it, alhamdulillah, in the masjid, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, multiply it 70 times or 700 times or 7,000 times or 7 million times. Alhamdulillah, this is the month, alhamdulillah, where Allah is offering special. Now, somebody told me whenever they see Imam Johari, Abid, they, they, their wallet starts to talk to them. You know, like, you, you know that all of the creation testifies 
to the existence of Allah and people say I don't believe that so much but your wallet talk to you when you see Johari the wallet says Audhu Billah he's going to ask for money talking wallet today I'm not going to ask you for money I'm going to ask you to share your relief the relief that you feel at the time of iftar to share that with someone who doesn't have that relief just share it in Dar Hijra we have iftar every night every night in Ramadan until the last few days Alhamdulillah $180 to feed one person every night in Ramadan. Now, Allah, don't have regret. Ya Allah, I wished I had. I read one narration, they said, this is the most common cry of the people of the hellfire. Regret. Oh, I wish, I wish, I wish. Make a list of what it is that you would like to say for yourself from this month, alhamdulillah, and then execute it, alhamdulillah, that Allah might reward you with the best in this life and the best in the hereafter. Allahumma deena fi man hadayt, wa feena fi man afayt, wa tawalana fi man tawalayt. O Allah, guide us among those whom you have guided. O Allah, take us as a friend among those whom you have taken as a friend. O Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace upon this ummah. Ya Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, that you might help us, that we might spread the message of La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah in this month. Oh Allah, we know that you are peace. Allahumma anta salam wa minka salam wa tabarak ya dhal jalali wal ikram. Ya Allah, as we know, yesterday, the first day of Ramadan, Ya Allah, nine people were killed, murdered in a church, Ya Allah. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, that you cause us to be agents of your peace, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, that we would help to usher in an environment that is free of racism, Ya Allah, and hate. O oh Allah, that we would spread the rahmah and the mawadda of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to our society. O oh Allah, cause us to be agents of change, walhamdulillah. O oh Allah, let us not, walhamdulillah, be caught only in the concern about nafsi, nafsi. Ya Allah, help us while we are in this life, walhamdulillah, that we would spread, walhamdulillah, your message and your love. Oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace on our young sister. She is a baby in the hospital, ya Allah. Oh Allah, have mercy on her. Her parents have asked we make dua for her. Oh Allah, have mercy on her and cure her, alhamdulillah. Oh Allah, we ask for your shifa, alhamdulillah, on all of the members of our community, ya Allah, who are suffering with difficulties. Oh Allah, we ask you to increase them in their risk. Give them risk on tayyibun, ya Allah. Oh Allah, who are people who are struggling with financial difficulty, ya Allah. Oh Allah, shower your barakah down on them, ya Allah. Oh Allah, for those of us, alhamdulillah, difficulties in our families, ya Allah, join our hearts together in love for you and love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. O oh Allah, we ask, alhamdulillah, for your mercy and your peace on those who are suffering, Ya Allah, around the world. O oh Allah, and those who are suffering, Ya Allah, around the corner, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, help them, alhamdulillah, to be steadfast, alhamdulillah, through the masiba, Ya Allah, through the trial and tribulation, Ya Allah, that they may be drawn closer to you, Ya Allah. And that you might shower upon them, alhamdulillah, your tuskunu, your sakina, your, your tranquility, Ya Allah. O oh Allah, because of their faith in you. O oh Allah, we ask for your mercy and your peace on the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, and on his family and on his companions and all of the Anbiya, Ya Allah, and those who follow the way of your haq, Ya Allah, until the day of judgment. Ameen.